I don't know if my dad will ever know all that he did for my financial education outside of the classroom. Maybe this speech will help. I hope it does. But when we were growing up, he was all about giving us unconventional experiences and exposure to money and to finances. And I want to share a few of those with you today. So when we were younger, our dad co-owned a gas station as a side investment. I think I was around 10 years old at the time. And one day he was driving to the bank to make a cash deposit from the gas station. And I didn't know this at the time, but I was riding in the front seat. But I do remember when we got close to the gas station, he reached down into the middle of the front seat and he pulled up this clear plastic bag full of cash. It's about $6,000 US, so about 400,000 rupee. And he looked at me holding it very seriously and he said, son, I want you to have this. I mean, my mind was blown. I mean, at 10 years old, it might as well be a million dollars. I didn't know what I was going to buy first. I didn't think there was anything I couldn't buy. I was also confused. Why is he giving this to me? What are my younger brothers going to think? And all this lasted only a couple seconds before he looked at me laughing. And he said, son, I'm just kidding. I'm not giving this to you. <laughs> now, <laughs> that may sound like a weird story about financial education, but it was actually an important benchmark for me to learn early on an amount of money that my dad was never going to just give me for no reason. When we were in high school, he created a program for us that instead of making us go work to earn money, he actually paid us for being great students, for being committed to our sports and our extracurriculars, and for being great sons at home and helping out around the house. And he actually paid us a really good amount of money for being in high school every single month. But by the end of the month, it ended up not being very much money at all. And that's because he made us pay for expenses, things like rent for living in his house. Things like food. <laughs> yeah. Things like food, water, laundry, electricity, things that no high schooler hardly is, I mean, any high schooler is thinking about paying. But what a great lesson early on to know that no matter how much money you make, you're always going to have expenses like that. And like I said, this exposure was constant. When we were young, he introduced us to the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. He had us invest our own money from limited savings into side businesses that my mom and dad were invested in. But the most important thing that my dad ever did for me, like I said, I didn't have to work in high school. But when I came home that first summer from college, instead of making me get a traditional summer job, he encouraged me to be entrepreneurial. And that led to Joseph and I starting a leadership camp for middle school students at our old middle school. Now, that was an amazing experience. Not only was it an incredible lesson in how to create value from scratch and how to earn income, but that was how Joseph and I discovered our passion and our purpose for coaching students and for leadership development. Now, we were on the traditional path at the time, so we finished that out. Joseph and I were both at the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University, and I graduated and actually went on to work for BMO Harris Commercial Bank in Chicago. And that was a wonderful experience. It really was. I mean, I graduated from an amazing training program. I was making really good money for my age. I loved the people that I worked with, and I was getting great experience in finance and in business. But I knew that for me, there was still another level. For me, that wasn't the ultimate. So about three years in, I was wrestling with the decision to leave BMO Harris and start the company that Joseph and I had always talked about around our passion for coaching students. I knew that there were huge risks with leaving a full-time job and starting a company, especially at our age. But because of those experiences I had growing up with my dad, because I understood how money worked, and because of what I was able to save while I was at BMO Harris, in August of 2015, I made the best decision of my life, and I left to start 220 Youth Leadership with Joseph. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Now, I believe that we have a huge, huge problem in this world today. It's one of the main reasons why we started the camp, and it's one of the foundations of 220 Youth Leadership. People base the most important decisions of their lives on money the most important decisions of their lives on money. Now, that may sound, you may wonder, is that true? And some of you may be saying, of course, or why wouldn't you? But it is true. It's true because it's the reason why we miss out on so many potential 
talented social problem solvers, entrepreneurs, inventors, scientists, performers, life skills educators. And it's also on the other end of the spectrum, the cause of so much suffering all over the world. But what if, imagine with me for a second, what if we can make those same decisions based on passion, excitement, and fulfillment? What would that look like? How would our world change? How could it be different? Now to some that may sound far-fetched, that may sound idealistic or even impossible, but it's not. It's not because it's all a matter of financial literacy. But not financial literacy in the traditional way that it's viewed and taught. I believe that there are two fundamental components of financial literacy, one of which is hardly, if ever, taught or talked about. Now that first one is the traditional one. It's just having a basic understanding of how money works in the world, how to earn money, save money, spend money, and invest money. But even the way we teach that today is behind where it needs to be. It's not about knowing how to open a checking account. It's not about learning time value of money in a classroom. It's about having those real life, real world experiences. I was a finance major at one of the top 10 business schools in the US. I worked on loan transactions from $10 million all the way up to $1 billion. And my most important financial education came from outside of all of that. It was having to pay cash for insurance on our house when I was in high school. It was sitting down with my uncle as a financial planner when I graduated to go over a line-by-line -line personal budget for me. It's that real-world, real-life exposure. Now, I believe because so often we don't get exposed to money the way we need to, there's this second component that comes up, the one that's hardly, if ever, taught or talked about, and it's that money is just a tool. That's it. Money is just a tool. It's just fuel. It's just a way for us to design our lives the way we want to. But because we don't get exposed to money the way we should, because we don't understand the way money works, money either becomes the ultimate goal so often, or people are willing to sacrifice crazy things like their time, their happiness, and their health just to have it or just not to lose it. Or it becomes the ultimate obstacle, the ultimate reason why we can't do what we really want to do or why we can't be who we really want to be. But it's not the ultimate goal and it's not the ultimate obstacle. Money is just a tool, a tool for us to design our lives the way we want to live them. But so often, because we don't understand it that way, it doesn't happen and it becomes an obstacle or it becomes the ultimate goal. Now, to some of you, this may sound far-fetched still, but what we need to do, what we need to do is change the goal of financial literacy from being about creating income, stability, and security, which is what it's about right now, to being about taking it a step further so we can use that knowledge to design our lives around passion, excitement, and fulfillment. Thank you. Now, some of you may still be doubting me, but I know that it's true because I'm a living example of what happens when you change the basis for your most important decisions. At just 26 years old, I own an apartment in Chicago. I left the promise and security of a six-figure job to start the company of my dreams with my brother. We wake up every single day, whether it's Saturday or whether it's Monday, excited to attack the day and do what we do. And now I'm here with all of you this weekend in Goa, India, celebrating our wonderful missions together. Thank you. So what can we do as life skills educators? What can we do to help solve this problem? And I think some of you already know what I'm talking about because most of us don't choose life skills because we think it's the most profitable profession. We do it because we love it and because that's how we want to devote our lives. And that puts us in an incredible position to help solve this problem. So what we need to do is help people change the basis of their decisions. We need to help them change the conversation. We need to change the goal of financial literacy from being about income, stability, and security to being about passion, excitement, and fulfillment. 
We only have one life on this earth as us. We have limited time, so why wouldn't we base every decision that we possibly can on passion, excitement, and fulfillment? Thank you. Thank you.